who did this, either meeting him or writing the book or even reflecting on the book, um, did it uh, bring about any changes or even um, self-realization when it comes to either parenting or for that matter, parenting as a sick American? Yeah, it, it really did. Um, you know, part of it was before I even decided to start writing the book. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story in, in 2016, uh, that's the year my older daughter was born. Um, six weeks after she was born, Boyd Jessing was actually in New York City for a, a race where he was a celebrity guest. And I, I went and took my daughter to meet him and he held her in his hands. Um, and when we talked, we sat in the living room and talked for about two hours. And, wow. and I remember thinking how cool would it be if my daughter could just absorb all this wisdom. And I was like, that's, that's all I could think the whole time we were yeah. talking. Yeah. Um, and, and especially these values of perseverance and, and resilience, as you were mentioning, like they're, they're so central to who he is as a person, like this, this, op, this boundless optimism and, and like really serious uh, challenges throughout his life that he's dealt with. Um, and so that, I think that was the moment when we were sitting, that, that was the moment when I decided to write the book. But the reason I wanted to write the book was because it really gave me fodder for how I wanted to raise my kids. Like I wanted these lessons to be passed to them. I, I think the other thing that I've been thinking about a lot more uh, as the book has come out is is how to talk about uh, some of these challenging concepts with our kids. And so mm. when, when I started writing it, it was almost theoretical. Like my kids were way too young to, to begin these conversations. I mean, too young, meaning like they didn't, they, they didn't understand. Right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, but but I think like three. At, at, it was around three that we started talking to our older daughter about race, and she started noticing race. Sure. Um, and so we wanted to give her opportunities to be exposed to different experiences, and then to ask whatever questions she wanted. Um, and so that definitely informed both how I wrote the book, but then also how now I, I sort of speak to my kids about these kinds of issues as as we encounter them in our world. You know, I'm, I'm sure this is simplifying it a little bit, but um, how does that feel to be able to pull a book like that as a Sikh American, as a person of color off the library shelf and be able to share that with your daughter? Oh, amazing. I mean, that's the dream, right? Like growing up, I couldn't have imagined it. It was, it was my dream always when I would go to libraries and bookstores to, to find a book with a Sikh character uh, and it'd be so painful. I mean, part of, right. part of the... Uh, unexpected experience of, of this book is, and I, maybe I should have expected this, uh, how many people in our community, not just Punjabi and Sikh, but also like South Asian generally, who were amazed to see a book that represents them. And, yeah. you know, I I felt that personally, but I never really thought about it being a collective experience. Yeah. Um, but but I think my my reflection is for those who... For those who know the pain of being uh, unrepresented and, and not feeling seen, feeling invisible, um, there is so much joy that's been coming with just, I mean, just a book with a cover and the pictures inside. Like, who cares what the story is? Like, this is just, this is just us, right? Like, it's, it's yeah. pretty cool. It's been really cool to see that. Mm -hmm.